Call the meeting to order, the County Copsey Board. Uh, Madam Secretary, do we have a quorum this morning? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, with six members present, we do. Thank you so much. Do we have proof of publication? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, it was published Thursday, February 1st, 2024, in the Escambia County Sun Press. Thank you. And I'll look for a motion to approve the minutes so from the previous meeting. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none, hearing none, motion has been approved. Next thing is our public forum session. If there's anybody in the public that would like to speak, register us, see Ms. Jennifer. Uh, we did not receive any request forms, speaker request forms, um, and I believe everybody here is for an agenda item. Thank you. Moving into the board secretary status report. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Both of these items have to do with Mr. Rushing. It was a case from our previous uh, hearing date. Um, the board requested that we bring them an update on this case at this meeting. It is set to go to a disciplinary hearing in March, but you requested to have an update provided to you today. I'm going to turn it over to Melissa for that update. Hi, good morning. Um, the first case had to do with the existing roof. Uh, Mr. Rushing's crew has made repairs on the chimney. There is still some minor issues, some exposed nails, and a couple of other things that they didn't get at that same time, uh, but are currently working on it. Um, and the second case was uh, the fascia work that was done without a permit. He did obtain a permit on January 27th and uh, he's failed two inspections. The first one, they called it in and they were not done, so it was failed because it wasn't done. 
The second one, uh, there still were some issues that uh, the inspector discovered, and so they're currently working on it, and that permit is still good. Any questions from anybody on the board concerning these particular cases? Then I also have a, just a reminder that we have that appeal hearing tomorrow evening. I believe, Mr. Lister, you are, I'm just confirming that you're going to be present. It is an evening BCC meeting. We are scheduled for public hearing at 537. I would suggest you be there before that because you don't know what the commissioners. Um, but just a reminder on that. Uh, and that's it. Thank you so much. And then we'll move into our probable cause hearing. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Our first probable cause hearing has to do with My D Tran doing business as MH Construction Services, LLC, state registered license number RG29110348, contractor competency board complaint number 230772. COM. It's in regard to Tal Brewer, the homeowner complainant at 945 East 10 Mile Road, Pensacola, Florida, 32514. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Um, Ms. Brewer, are you present today? No, we represent her. That's, I'm, her I'm her son's guy. Her daughter. Yeah, okay. So, you, and you're going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Um, we was just Thank you. And Mr. Tran, are you present today? I do not see that Mr. Tran is present. Uh, at this time, I'm going to have the parties sworn in for this hearing, as well as Ms. Reber, and she's going to remain sworn for the duration of this meeting. Would you raise your right hands to be sworn? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Thank you. Um, Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? There was July 11th of 2023. And were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? <clears throat> yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? Yes, I was. Did the complainant provide any supporting documentation for the case and is it attached to the agenda as backup? She did and yes, it is all attached. And did the respondent provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Uh, he did not. Uh, were permits obtained? If so, when were they obtained and what are their current status? Uh, a permit was obtained for a new single family dwelling on July, excuse me, January 5th, 2021. Uh, the permit did expire but was reinstated on February 1st, 2023. Uh, the last inspection was sediment control on August 31st, 2023. Um, the, and the, was unable to find a separate roof permit and the framing inspection was missed uh, on the building permit. The permit is still in an active status. At this time, staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. So moved. Second. The motion is second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same time. Seeing none, hearing none, motion has been approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to this case? If so, please state each violation and your justification. Code section 1837C6, uh, Tran has allegedly told um, Brewer on several occasions that he doesn't have the funds uh, to finish her project. Uh, an example is Tran asked Brewer to pay uh, in excess of $22,000 for cabinetry that was included in his project. Um, Brewer also provided evidence that there is a current lawsuit with a material supplier against Tran and contained in that lawsuit are invoices for materials not paid. 
on his project. Um, in addition, Tran received, uh, at, at the time, back in 2021, when they executed the contract, an additional $10,000 that was supposed to go towards building a home for Ms. Brewer's son. No permits, nothing has ever transpired on that. He's not refunded the money or, you know, she doesn't know where that, that money is. Code section 1837 D15, uh, Tran has missed the framing inspection on the project. It's completely sheetrocked in now. And for the record, that was D15B. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what that says. <laughs> uh, code section 1837 D15C, it's unable to locate the roofing permit on that project, the new single family dwelling. And also um, there's supposed to be, I think four skylights, they're not in. And uh, the roof did begin some leaking that may or may not have been fixed. The representatives for Ms. Brewer, if you could please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and this is your opportunity to provide the board with information about the case, okay? <laughs> and board, I, I noticed that Mr. Tran has just come into the, to the building. I believe it is more than likely his intent. Uh, so whenever, after the representatives for Ms. Brewer get done, I'll have him sworn, and then we can also hear from him. Thank you. I'm good, morning. Ginger, good morning. I'm Ginger Farias. I'm her daughter and my brother. <coughs> and I'm Guy, Guy Farias. I'm her son. Can you spell your names? G-I-N-G-E-R-F-A-R-I-A-S. Thank you. Mine is Guy, G-U-I, and same last name, F-A-R-I-A-S. And your addresses, please. 4029 Ashland Avenue, Pensacola, Florida, 32534. I guess my mom, my mom was waiting um, after the first year. She just wanted the house to be done. Um, me gave her some dates that he expected, I guess, for the house to be done, and it's been dragging on for, he's now in the third year, and she just wants the house done. Um, she's stressed out about it, <laughs> so uh, she decided not, not to come in. Um, um, and we just want to see the house done. And that's all I got. Do you have anything to say with it? No, not really. I, I don't. I mean, basically the same thing. You know, we were promised it would be done by a certain time, and it wasn't. And, you know, it's, we just want it done. Uh, may I ask a question, please? Mm -hmm. Have you seen the current condition of the home? Yes. Can you explain what the current condition of the home is? It's un unfinished projects um, as far as electrician, plumbers, everybody's got something. The HVAC is not even in yet. Um, the master bath, shower is incomplete. I'm not sure if they put in the tub yet, but it was supposed to be a, um, a whirlpool tub and it's a garden tub. But um, I'm not sure how what my mom's status, what my mom feels about that. Um, she mentioned something that it was supposed to be a whirlpool tub, but um, and just all the like the brick, the brick is not you know just a lot of. Uh, I'm sorry just, to um, just a lot of incomplete project, you know, incomplete loose, loose ends. <coughs> We, we received pictures of damage, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and I, I draw your attention to the screen up there. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and can you explain some of that, that's, that's um, the, the damages? Room. That's the window in, mm -hmm. the, in that room, you know, with the two doors. I'm sorry, that, I cannot. And the doors that go in and out. But you can know, you please speak into the microphone? Yeah, the other the... picture that, that was right above it, that's the leak. That was the wall, <laughs> the drywall, and there was a leak in the roof and so that caused that picture that was that picture 
The other one is the window. Um, what was wrong with the window? You know that one? The master? No, that, that one to the right, of the left. Of, you remember we said, and the piece is missing on the top, yeah, and the like window was, was not... Um, seal on the yeah, top and it's missing. Yeah, it's just and that crooked. One, it's not right. Or if I may add, I believe the drywall has been repaired. Those pictures go with um, a letter that, uh, excuse me, an email that she sent him telling him she has problems now, the roof was leaking. Um, and I have some inspections of the current, uh, photos of the current condition of the house. And that's yeah, what I was right bringing there. up right. now. Right. Mm -hmm. Over there where the water builds up, up in those two areas. Um, there's not drainage or, or it's draining and all the sand is yeah. washed out from underneath the, the, the driveway. Where that plant, there's a planter up in that corner right there on the left hand corner. Right. Mm -hmm. By um, the door, by the front door. Yep. Right there in there, yeah. The, that puddle's water. Yeah. And that the valley just drains right down into that hole. And, and there's nowhere for the water to go, so. It's, it's washed out. You can see all the sand and dirt has washed out on the side, yep. All over there, all the sand. So there's, there's no gutters installed, it looks, at this point? No. And I'm just going to scroll through, and if you have any commentary as we go. Yeah, okay. You can, see, you, can see you can see the mortar. You can see the mortar on the, on the bricks, too. Uh, the only um, real good spot is the one above that first garage, garage door. It looked like that, that was a professional, and the rest was looks sloppy. Yeah, that circle and what's that number? I don't know what that is I'm for. Sorry, ma'am. I don't know what that circle is for. We were wondering what that circle was for. I'm not sure that I, it was supposed to be steps there, and and I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, yeah, you can see the different color in the mortar. Um, they're just two different colors. I mean, two different people did the brick job, obviously. Yeah. When did the construction on this start? January. 21? January, January 20. sometime in 2021. That's correct. January of 2021. And has it passed any inspections at this point? I mean, um, it has passed inspections. The um, framing inspection was was not done. It, it was missed. Um, the sub inspections. I'm pretty sure June of last year, everything, everyone passed their uh, rough in. There, there is nothing on site for the mechanical system. And the last inspection that Tran received was a sediment control in August of last year. And how much money have they paid Mr. Tran at this point? Um, let's see. He's received, um, including the cabinet payment, the total amount of the contract was three hundred and fifty-five thousand nine ninety-six seventy-seven. He's received three hundred and forty thousand two hundred and fifty-one dollars and ninety-one cents. That, like I said, that did include the um, her paying out of pocket for the cabinets. And which, then he which has an out? additional ten thousand dollars for the construction uh, that should have been for Guy's home. And and how much did she again? I I'm sorry for you to repeat yourself, but how much was the cabinets? The cabinets were twenty two thousand eight fifty three ninety one. Um, and, I, and so that's in addition to what she's already paid. The, well, that three forty yeah. does include the cabinets. Okay. Um, and she has asked um, Mr. Tran for a balance sheet because she feels like there's still a discrepancy in what he gave her versus her canceled checks. So, um, and I've spoke to him about that and I, he, he may have that to provide today. And how long ago were these pictures taken? I took these uh, end of last month. So this house is nowhere close to getting a CO yet. So just to to let the board know about procedural items from building services, um, it would have had to have passed 
the proper inspections. Right. Uh, at this point, the framing inspection was not performed. However, you can see from these photographs that sheetrock is installed already. Uh, you cannot install sheetrock after you have that framing inspection done. So you're kind of at a, a, a hold right now, in essence, because you need the proper inspections to get your certificate of occupancy. They were not obtained. Now there's going to have to be, and John can probably speak to this, um, probably an engineer's report certifying the stuff that we cannot see and during our inspection process, or they're going to have to make the things we need to inspect visible, which means tearing some of that stuff out. Um, that's going to result in, in, in further expenses. Um, so as of right now, this, this project, according to Building Services, is at a standstill until we have something that can give us progress forward. And I'm just restating the obvious here. So we're, we're three years into a build of a roughly 2,000 square foot home. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Can I get clarification? Was all the money paid up front? No, the money no. Paid up front. In draws. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. No. <clears throat> I can clarify. She um, she paid thirty thousand dollars even before they signed the contract. I think that was made in in two payments. Jen, if we can the backup for the payments. Um, sometimes she was given an invoice, uh, she states, and sometimes she was not. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then included in here, there was also uh, a check for $20,000 was given, and uh, Ms. Brewer alleges that uh, Tran reached back out to her and said he needed cash for that because his bank was going to put a hold on it and he needed to pay for the septic tank. Mm -hmm. So um, at that point, they took the check back, transferred into uh, his wife partner's account $20,000, and there's a transfer of that. For, just for clarifications as well here, if I'm Understanding right, the contract was three fifty five nine nine six. That is correct. To date, including the cabinets, has only been three forty two fifty one. Right. Which yeah. leaves probably fifteen thousand seven hundred and something, whatever it is, balance. He has not exceeded the contract amount as of today, right? As of today, he has not. Okay, so he hasn't really went above the amount that was initially agreed upon. So, and also to add, um, she did give him a $10,000 deposit for That's the other fixing the lead structure. Too. But isn't that a separate, I mean, it, 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 they would have to have a separate contract for that. And how much is that contract for? Because I believe the law states that if it's 10% or more, you have to start within 30, 60 days, something like this. Yes. But if not... There's no time limit there. So there can that 10000 be included towards this or not? Yeah. Because if it's a separate contract, it wouldn't be a part of this. Is that correct? It is a separate contract, and it, just a copy of that's included in that's there. What I so, so the 10000 really does not affect us today on this case. Right. She and just want, Yeah, she submitted it just right. to but say the, there's but another the, 10000 But the 10000 is that... How much was the contract for the house? Was it under a hundred thousand? It's. I, I think it's two fifty five. She's so bringing 10, it up. Now. Ten thousand's not ten percent. Mm -hmm. Correct. So basically, he has indefinitely to start that one. I mean, that's that's kind of mm -hmm. not right. But he, he's not in violation of Correct. having received that payment and not started as of yet. Correct. Ms. Correct? Brewer okay. provided this okay. information just to sure. say, hey, I've also sure. paid him for this. I understand. Mm -hmm. I'm just making sure that he the two separate and he has not already exceeded something to you know have him in, in uh, 
fault default here. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Any questions up here? No, I do have one more because it just hit me. You, you said that there's no mechanical on site, so there's nothing there for, but he received payment for the mechanical. Um, well, he's got the balance of what, what was just said. Um, right. And But there's no mechanical there. Okay. There's no rough end? I thought there's I saw rough, pictures. There was, there was a rough end. The duct, the duct work is in, the register is in, but the machine itself is not there. The air handlers and condensers. What that? Okay. They would put that in on trim out. So, I have a question: Was there a financial institution involved where a bank uh, representative would go out and look? No, sir. Hmm. Yeah, she has paid cash for this he all is, along. He has built for us a couple houses in the past, and we had no problems. Like a pretty good sized house for three hundred fifty-five thousand dollars. <laughs> it's a pretty good sized house. Twenty-five, twenty-five hundred square foot. Mm -hmm. Three years ago. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Do we raise Mr. Tran? Mr. Tran, I see that you've joined us. If you could come forward, I'm going to have you sworn in um, for to provide testimony, and then you'll state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, my train, 1161 West 9, one half mile road. Okay, let me swear again. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And try and speak slow with your accent, please. Okay. Go ahead. Speak to the mic, too. Okay, well, here's the deal is get, I just need one month. I finish the house, I do not go over budget. The countertop has been installed. Today, the tub will be installed because I have to put a, a uh, solid surface on the structure, then the tub will drop in. That is being done today. The shower floor base has been done. I email you today, Melissa, and you can see the picture. And plumbing, I spoke to him just a while ago. He be out there Friday and uh, to complete everything. Air conditioner, same way. I don't want to put the air conditioner in because of theft. So the inside unit and the outside unit will be installed end of next week. So tomorrow or the next day, we will do the driveway. And we pass the inspection by road department I think about last week that we are okay to pour the uh, driveway over the uh, storm storm drain. So driveway will be done tomorrow or next day. So I just need one more month. Mr. Tran, are you were you aware that you missed the framing inspection for this? I just noticed today. I did not, I'm not aware of that. And do you have a plan to reconcile that? Well, I will talk to the inspector and see what I can do, but I don't know how I missed that. I mean, there's a wind load inspection. I mean, there's strapping nail inspection. And there's a lot of inspection, but I don't know how I missed the framing. Might be a typo, but I will get that result. See what we can do. Um, Secretary, do we have record of wind strapping and load and when Co load was that passed? Correct, sir. Yes, that did have passing inspections. At this juncture, he'll have to get the framing inspection resolved. And also, there's no roofing permit for the structure. Um, the in progress for the roof might have been viewed whenever the wind load was performed. But because the permit was not obtained, we have no record of an in-progress inspection on the roof, which is required for a new roof. Um, so he'll have to resolve that matter as well. So one of the critical inspections has been done. The wind load strapping has been completed, which is That is critical. correct. So uh, I will talk the uh, permitting inspection to resolve this and get a CO within by 1st of March. So it will be completed.
And all the drywall issue, I'm not complete. When I'm complete, I will fix all the scratch, you know, damage, this and that. Punch list items. Yeah. I mean, we are almost done, probably just 5% more. I mean, all this is the minor. I mean, all the majority is done. Cabinet is in, countertop is in, and concrete getting poured tomorrow or the next day. I mean, everything is getting done. Uh, uh, Hang on just a second. You can't speak from there. Sorry. Mr. Sorry. Tran? You can speak later. Mr. Tran, did you previously provide an end date to Ms. Brewer in September that you would have it completed by then? Uh, yes, I did, but I did not make it. Uh, a lot of issue arise, but I'm here. I'm going to finish it without going over the budget. And so you're saying that you can't complete everything without going over that 300 yeah. And, yeah. and 55. Yeah. I, I never ask her for more money, even though I lose money on the house, but I'm honoring my contract and finishing it. I mean, anybody that walked the house can see building at that price. I, I can make money, but I'm not complaining. That's my price, and I honor it. I will complete it. Any comments, any questions? You have a question. Um, the roofing, is was it installed by a licensed roofing contractor? The roofing is done. I do all my new construction. I pull the roofing permit, and I do the roofing permit in-house. I do the roofing myself. If there's not a permit, uh, I must have thought it was included but I can pull the permit and get inspected. All my new construction, I do my own roof. I build a lot of houses for Miss Brewer. Every time she have issue with leaks, I'm the one that fix it. So just this one take me a little bit of time, but I make it right. I think we have no more questions this time, Madam Secretary. Thank and, you, Ms. Tran. Yeah, and uh, one more thing I saw there is the cut on the front step. To be honest, I don't know why my guy did that, but it's somebody got to tell him to do that, you know, but I will fix that as well. Thank you, sir. Yes. Did... Uh, the guy, did he have a comment on it? Yes. There were some columns in the back back porch area, probably, uh, I don't know exact what the count was, probably about, I would say, eight columns, and that was supposed to have brick around it, and none of the columns have the brick on. So that sh should be included in the his completion thing or whatever I just wanted to say that thank you thank you hey uh, mr. Farius yes. could you please step back forward do you do you feel that your mother miss Brewer would be amenable to allowing him to have that month to finish this project out she does want it finished so um, I don't think there's anybody else that would st step up to finish his project so I, I would imagine that she would want that done. Okay. Can't imagine anybody else finishing it for M 15. Miss Reber. <laughs> Hi. Miss Reber, are you aware if we have any other complaints historically on, on Mr. Tran? Um, we do have a situation that's coming back to the board. Uh, where he, they came to a private restitution agreement um, that is set for you all to be heard in April. It 
involved a Korean barbecue, um, and they did they did come to a separate agreement on that. Can we ask staff to please pull for the next meeting a list of all of his outstanding permits that are still out there? Actually, if you would like to view that, I can pull that for you now. You can look at his permitting records. Board, while she's pulling that, I'll just add the reason um, Miss Brewer, you know, felt that she needed to take this step is when she filed this complaint in July. It had already been a few years. Um, at that point, Mr. Tran reached out to her, and they entered into an agreement um, that she would pull or stop the complaint and give him until September and he would have the CO to her then. Um, that came and went, and so that, that has been her main concern. And to speak to someone else coming in, she has already had other contractors come and look, and for the amount of money, nobody wants to you know, step in, obviously, behind him. Um. So I would like to draw your attention to uh, your, your monitors. Um, this is the licensing card where we house all the information for contractors. You'll notice that I pulled up Mr. Tran's licensing card. Um, in his associated permits, let me make this a little bit larger. These are the current projects, the permit list for um, Mr. Tran. You will see the statuses here, and I believe that's what you were asking uh, Miss Mary was how many are open. Um, you will see certain ones are closed. Um, if you need further information on what these permit numbers and what they're for, you just ask and I can explain that. Um, but if you see permit issued, those are ones that are still at an open status. Um, and you see there are still some from previous years, uh, 21, uh, 2020 um, that are still open. There's one from 2019. Um, so yeah, he, he does have quite a few open permits. I'd like to go ahead and make a motion to move this to disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations. Second. Do you have any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Seeing none here, none. Motion has been approved to move to disciplinary hearing. And that disciplinary hearing would be in April. April. Um, that does not preclude Mr. Tran from going ahead and finishing this yes, and coming sir. back. Just make sure that they. Yes, sir. Um, hang on just a moment, and I'll provide you with that actual date in April. So, Mr. Tran, that hearing will be on April 3rd, um, and you will be receiving notice. Thank you. Um, Ms. Joanne, can you do me a favor? Can you um, read back that motion so I make sure that he, what was included in that motion?
where we wanted to make sure. Thank you, Miss Joanne. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I was hitting the last question. We wanted to ensure that he did reference the alleged violations. Um, it wasn't, we were handling some things over here, it wasn't really heard. Just wanted to confirm that. Thank you. Um, our next item. Yes, ma'am. Is Sean Carpentier doing business as first on-site property restoration, state certified license number CGC 1525001, contractor competency board complaint number 230998COM. It's in regard to Maurice Dixon, the homeowner complainant at 8150 Pine Forest Road, McDavid, Florida 32568. As you can recall, this was a hearing that we had at our last meeting and it was continued to this meeting. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Um, Mr. Dixon, are you present today? And are you gonna provide testimony for this hearing? Thank you. And Mr. Carpenter, are you present today? Yes. And are you gonna provide testimony? Yes. Thank you. At this time, I'm gonna have the parties sworn in and just a reminder, Ms. Reber was previously sworn. Thank you. And Ms. Reber, a form, we know that a formal complaint was filed with the board. Can you give a reminder of when that complaint was filed? Well, I got it. Okay. September 12th of 2023. And um, from that last probable cause hearing, was anything additional provided by either party? And if so, um, is it attached to this agenda? The, what was provided was uh, the permit for the shower pan and the past inspection. And that was the outstanding issues. And so at this time, I would request that the additional evidence uh, attached to the agenda be moved into evidence. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign, seeing none, hearing none, motion is approved to move evidence into record. Um, Ms. Reber, can you just briefly touch on the code sections that you cited at the last probable cause hearing um, and your justification for each one? Can you make it bigger? <laughs> I am. Code section 1837D9B, um, that involved um, the issuance with the shower pan being installed. Um, and it's, it's my understanding there may have been some explanation that it was put in but not actually hooked up. But that's since they've gotten a permit now, a plumber got a permit and did install it and have it inspected. Code section 1837D98H, um, I'm sorry, that uh, surrounded by there was just things done that, um, that didn't appear to be done right. I think that um, there was a, a gentleman that was up there, there was communication between the office, misunderstandings, I do think they are, and a lot of that is cosmetic. I think they, and it could be done, gone back now, and they're, they're fixing certain things that didn't appear to be in there correctly. And code section 1837D15C, that relates back to the permit for the shower pan. At this time, I, it would be Mr. Dixon's opportunity yes. to provide you with an update. Mr. Dixon, if you could please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and it's your opportunity to address the board. Good morning. Good morning. Um, name and address, please. Maurice Dixon, um, 8150 Pine Forest Road, McDavid, Florida. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. um, they working on it, but it's 
they ordered the wrong skins, so we still behind on that. Um, they said they ordered them. We just waiting on that to come in. Um, the pan is down, the mudding. He's almost done with the mud, and I think he's got mud it one more time before he can do put the skins on now. But yeah, I mean, but yeah, it still ain't done, but they working on progress. It. Yeah. Yes, sir. They working on it. When you say skins, you're talking about towel or uh, no, it's the uh the skins that go on the side of the shower. It's like slab. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. Gotcha. And I think he said oh, once he do that and I guess get everything hooked up, that should be good. Be finished. Yeah. It passed inspections, that's good news, huh? Yeah. That's good. Is that it? Anything else you'd like to tell us? I, I just want it done, Get man. finished. I mean, that's the only bathroom we got. You know, <coughs> right. We haven't started the one upstairs yet. But, uh, yeah, I just want to get it done and get it done right. Gotcha. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Carpenter, if you could state your name and address. Sean Carpenter, 4441 Southside Drive, Gulf Breeze, Florida, 32563. Um, we got the permit done. The, well, Plumbing was done. The permit or the plumber just needed to fix things with his license last time. That's been done. Inspection's been passed. We ordered specifically what Mr. Dixon sent us as far as what um, shower slabs he wanted. They came in. They do not fit correctly. They're too small. We've ordered new ones. They should be in, I believe, today. Then we can go forward with completing the work. Once that's installed, there'll be some painting, some minor issues, the trim on the plumbing to be put back, and then we're completed with everything. Wrapping it up now. Yes. Any questions from anyone? It appears from the conversation that most of these codes have been corrected. Yes, sir, that's stated. correct. Um, Saying, seeing that, I'd make a motion to dismiss. So motion on the floor to have a second? I'll second that. I have a motion second. Any discussion? All in favor of dismissing complaint number 230998COM, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your right hand. The motion passes, majority, to dismiss. Thank you guys for getting this taken care of. I uh, appreciate you uh, keeping our industry clean here. <clears throat> Moving to disciplinary hearing. Restitution. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this disciplinary hearing is for restitution only. Uh, this is James B. Freeman doing business as Freeman Roofing, state registered license number RC0058058, contractor competency board complaints number 230670COM. It's in regard to Nick and Chloe Sexton, the, home, the complainants at 101 South F Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32502. Um, proper notice was sent to the respondent, and as you can tell, parties are present today. It appears that they both have representation. I don't know if you would like to hear from that representation first before we get into the meat and bones of this. They need to uh, be sworn in. Christine. Do they? Christine. Attorney. Attorney. Well, the attorneys know. That's okay. And, and Ms. Hampton, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, I do have, before you spend any time going through things that you normally do, Excuse me, sir. Can you I'm approach sorry. the mic? We can't. I'm sorry. John Trawick, uh, Mr. Chair, board members, I uh, represent the Sextons. Um, I just had the opportunity for the first time to speak to Freeman Roofing's counsel. We had a substantive discussion out there um, that we really need more time to discuss the possibility of a complete resolution on this. Um, 
I don't know if, uh, if the board would consider taking a recess for 30 minutes. The devil's in the details on these sorts of things because what we're talking about is a scenario that would involve um, uh, work done by Freeman, which as the board will recall, previously the owners said they were not willing to consider. So we have to work through a couple of details. Um, I, I, I know there's another hearing next month on one of the other counts. Uh, the, the, the count we're here today for is the restitution count on the failure to supervise. There's another count for discipline, set for disciplinary next month. Um, because this is the sixth hearing, I would prefer not to just push this to next month um, if we can't reach a, a resolution, but we need a little bit more time to talk. We tried to do that at the very beginning, but we just didn't have enough time. I, I didn't know if, if the board would consider taking a recess or, or if, if you just, if that's not something the board would, would do, I, I can understand. I um, will entertain some uh, input from other members here, but. Mr. Trewick, I'm glad you're here today. We've been here a while. I understand. I've, I've watched the videos. Not just today. I mean, we've been months on this. And for us to, I mean, th these are all business people up here. Every, in fact, everybody in here pretty much. And so if somebody asked you right now to go twiddle your thumb for 30 minutes, <laughs> uh, you know, that would be kind of tough. I, I understand. And for it, us to I mean, what what would you guys go do for 30 minutes? You know, I've got places to go. These guys have got places to go where we need to be to make money and not sit here for 30 minutes. So I'll entertain some uh, some discussion from up here, but it would be a continuance, in my opinion, instead of uh, sitting around waiting 30 minutes. we got building officials and attorney you know, of our own and all of it. And, and I understand that, Mr. Um, Chairman Lister. Um, uh, just to be clear, this is the first settlement offer I have received. This sure. has not been something that we've been And dragging. we respect that. I don't mean to be disrespectful to you, Mr. I, I, I just wanted to be clear um, I, that this is not because we right. are just now right. getting around to something we could have done before. Um, and, and I only make it in the context that this has been the second time that the Sexons were in front of this board. I would just say since we have it scheduled next month, let's move this to next month to give us more time. Well, um, legal counsel, what would you suggest here? If they're working on a settlement, that may take some things off the off of your responsibilities and also reduce the number of uh, problems with it. Sure. So if the attorneys are working on it, I would leave it to the. I'm always going to leave it to the attorneys oh, yeah. to settle but it. He's asking us to take a recess for 30 minutes and come back. And I'm I'm saying, all of us, what are we going to do for 30 minutes? Is there a problem with just continuing it to next month? Oh. Well, only I, within the context of the previous five hearings. Um, the, the, well, the settlement, if it was signed, would go into effect immediately, and the restitution right. may not have to be heard if you submit something to the board, correct? Correct. And, and the alternative would be we could go ahead and go forward with the restitution hearing today, and then counsel and I could still have a discussion that would obviate and not necessitate restitution. But that's taking up the board's time, taking up attorney's time, um, and I, I recognize the preference may be to push it to next month. I, I am being, I do understand that every one of you have other things, paying jobs, um, I, I, and I do appreciate that. I, I don't mean to think that you can just uh, willy-nilly sit around and do nothing, um, and I, I wouldn't suggest that, but for the context. Um, uh, so but, but whatever the board decides, we'll certainly agree with. What does the uh, opposing counsel suggestion? Uh, ben and Benjamin Alexander, I'm here for Freeman Roofing. Um, we're, we're in agreement uh, with respect to the, um, we, we've had some substantive discussions about settlement. We need to uh, delineate the exact terms of that settlement. Uh, until we do that, there is no settlement. Um, that said, um, we, we would prefer some time to, to work it out. I understand, of course, if the uh, board needs to get somewhere. You know, we're hopeful that we can get it done in about 15 minutes or so, but if if not, I mean, obviously, Mr. Trevick and I are going to continue having these discussions outside of this. Um, having the board here kind of helps motivate parties to get it resolved sooner, so uh, th there's certainly some, some usefulness in, in that, but, uh, again, we, we appreciate, of course, also your busy schedules. Um, my first pass on this is kind of a complicated matter. And if they can work it out, it would save us a lot of time downstream. So if we were to proceed today, it may take longer than the 15 minutes to get it done, if they can get it done. So I don't, if we're not going to extend it, I would make a motion to uh, give them 15 minutes to 
see if they can reach an agreement. Did you make a motion? I was making a motion to extend it for 15 minutes. Okay, I need a second if we can just for us to have any discussion. Second. Or we can let it die. Second. All right, second. So now we need discussion. I, I go back to it always seems to be the 11th hour, and I get that you only work when you're told, and you have just get here just now, but this seems to be a pattern. It's the last second. And here we are asked to sit longer for the last second ruling again. If I can, it's a common practice with law. Is that <laughs> <laughs> so? But you're going to, I would just, you're going to discuss this for a little while and they could be meeting. Um, so, one other relevant issue uh, in the last meeting, my client uh, indicated a need to obtain an engineer, had some issues obtaining a local engineer, ultimately had to hire an engineering firm out of Orlando. They came and did an inspection. We got the report after 8 p.m. last night. Uh, so we, of course, are also, we've been, we've been waiting. Um, we were hopeful to get that information a while back. Uh, of course, from our standpoint, we needed that report to kind of flush out everything on our end as well. So having that, I think it helped facilitate that. And that's kind of why it's, it's very last minute. We've been kind of waiting on some other parties to finally get around to us. But it, that, that said, yes, a lot of 11th hour settlements is very common in law because unfortunately a lot of clients uh, aren't motivated until finally they are. Hey, that just took 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, for the benefit of the complainants, I'm saying let, I'd rather get this over today, get it done. I'd like to hear from the engineer. I prefer the continuance. That's where I stand on it. It'd be ready in 30 days. Yeah, I, I, I can understand that um, because once we get into it, now hearing that the engineering report just came in late, um, if it's amenable to Mr. Trawick's clients for the extension, I can withdraw my motion. Um, also, the engineering report is not before the board. Right. At the, it's it's right. not been submitted to us. We have copies of it. I'm sorry. They provided, each party provided uh, sufficient copies. This morning. Okay. So we have, as of right now, we haven't submitted the evidence, but it can be. It, it can be. Gotcha. It, yes, it can be. I, I have not had a chance to review it yet. <laughs> it, it was very late. I got it this morning as well. I understand the reports of getting this done. I, I promise I do. We've been involved in stuff last minute. Can I make a suggestion before we go into a hearing? Um, why don't we give you the copies of the reports? Since it's not in the record, you haven't had a chance yourself to review it. I know that staff could use a break. Um, and, and then if you give them the 15 minutes, then we can take a quick break. Everyone can, I know an engineering report is not a short read, but at least you can familiar, familiarize yourself with it before you go into the hearing. Because you need to see the evidence and have the chance to review it. And then you can decide whether or not a continuance would benefit you as the fact finder. I have a motion on the floor that I must deal with first, though, before we take a recess. I withdraw my motion. Okay. I do not have a motion on the floor. <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to request a continuance to next month's meeting. Do I have a second on that motion? Put a second out there. Any discussion? May I make a suggestion? Yes, please. I'd Sh should you do, you may want to um, consider that if they settle it before then, then if they pre presented um, that to Miss Reaver, a settlement, um, even if it's confidential, that the board could um, just not put it, you could go ahead and continue it, and then if a settlement is, is reached, then you could just take it off the agenda. That could be part of your motion. I, I thought that would just be understood. Well, it's important in these types of things that we get them on the record. Okay. Thank you. That makes sense. Uh, Council, I do have a question too. If, so what, what we're doing in our reasoning of our numbers, and there, there, I have to say that I studied this thing yesterday, and there's a lot of questions that we would have 
moving parts here. We have a roofer part of our board that could probably give some enlightenment on some of these things as well as we went hash through it, you know. Um, it's, it's a substantial amount of money for us, you know, to give restitution for somebody in these things. So obviously we take that seriously sort of by, by that much money. Um, if this is resolved today, tomorrow, real, real shortly, us making a decision on it 30 days from now versus today will not affect what they come to an agreement with, correct? Because we are just confirming what they have come up with and then putting it from the COMC board, but from a civil, I guess the right word, standpoint, that would still be outside of the ramifications of what we're doing? Am I correct with this? I'm not an attorney. They could, they, if they reach a settlement, is that what you're asking, if they reach a settlement? Right, right. How does that affect your determination on restitution? Because that's a civil matter, correct? You can just agree be... to accept, accept the settlement or that the matter was settled outside of there's no need for you to take further action because it, the civil matter will be enforceable. That's um, what that's from my point. That's the that's the nut and bolt of it. And of course, we don't want to shirk our responsibility either. But in other words, this what they're doing will not be halted by us if we did wait 30 days. Is that correct or not? Right. You're not going to. Yes, it would influence a, a collateral matter. That's what I've but I make sure of that we because to Mr. Irwin's point here. Mr. We don't want to do something to prolong this because it has been this long. I'm, I'm sorry, but Mr. Trawick, I'm kind of getting some signals out of your clients. So before you make a decision on their behalf. <laughs> and while he's coming up, I'm going to hand you the report, if that's okay. Let me do this. We're going to take a recess, a break. Well, excuse me. I got emotional on the floor. I can't do this. I can't do this. We've got to get our sales back together. I have emotional on the floor, and I have a second. We can delay, can we delay the vote until after recess? Council, can we delay the vote on this motion while it's on the floor and do a recess now, or do we have to take care of the motion on the floor? Okay. I, I don't see a problem is if everybody's in agreement. If they're okay with taking a break in the middle of it, it's not going to change anything. But at this point, do you have a second? I do have a motion, okay. and I have Mr. Bill as a second. Mm -hmm. I don't. I was going to hand you some more paperwork, but I don't. I don't see a problem with that sitting, um, pondering what the motion is on the floor and the ramifications is is not a problem. You're in a discussion point. Mr. Oglesby, is it okay if we take a recession, just a, a recess, just to kind of group our head together here? Mr. Chairman, that's, that's up to you. Um, I, I think your... a motion and a second was on the floor, and um, typically we would vote. But that's... I, I don't know any of the rules that require that, or, you know. So, yeah. you followed. Robert's yeah. rule of order, I guess, is the. I can you follow can over, you follow the rules of order but there's no but there's no but there's movement in there if the board decides we just need to take a little as long as you're not doing anything that violates the rights of the parties then you're okay so okay I want us to take a recession because this is getting very complicated and I want these guys to have you know a, a, talk to your clients and, and kind of get our head together here I don't want no 30 minutes, though. I'm sorry. I don't want to do that. I want to be respectful to these guys. Um, if we do a 10-minute, that will allow you all to at least group and decide something. Is that fair to you all, too? That's acceptable. Yes, sir. And I think that's mm -hmm. acceptable to our guys up here. So we'll do a 10-minute recession. Right. Um, Recess. <laughs> recession. <laughs>
call the meeting back to order. We've had a little bit longer than 10 minute recess. We have evidence that's been submitted. We have a motion on the floor, but we have evidence that has been submitted. Do we need to go ahead and move this evidence into record before we go to our motion? Mm -hmm. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Can we do that in the middle of a motion? That's simply moving it into evidence. No objection. No objection. That's fine. Okay. Once again, as long as we always Mike. Make, once we make sure that, that the party's rights are being respected, we can okay. you can pretty much just do want to make sure we're not getting out of this. <laughs> Robert's <laughs> rules is not gonna come find us. Okay. All right. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. See none here, none. Motion to move evidence and the record has been approved. Now we're back to discussion on our <clears throat> motion, and is there anything council would like to add to us? Um, and subject to what Mr. Alexander may add to what I'm about to say, um, we have positive movement. I can't sit here and say that we've agreed on all terms, um, but we conceptually have uh, an understanding that will allow us to talk further and get try to work out the details that would ultimately culminate, hopefully, in a settlement agreement. Um, that would take this off the table completely before the next meeting. Uh, we just need more time to do that. And what we tried to do just then is to see if there were just some, if, if he and I both said, well, it doesn't look like we're going to get there, in which case we would have come back before you and said, let's go forward with the hearing. But it sounds like there's enough potential that we can get there. Um, we just need more time to do it. So that's that's my report. Mr. Tyson? I concur. Okay. So, Council, let me ask your opinion of this. We move it to continuance, which is what is on the floor. They do have the ability to come back next month if there's no agreement and this procedure continue. If we go next month and it's been resolved, then it can be dropped. So the continuance is not going to affect anything again. Just want to confirm that. You're correct. Gotcha. Okay. Just want to make sure we protect you guys as well for what you're doing. Okay. So I have a motion on the floor for a continuance, and I have a second. Any other questions, discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion has been approved for a continuance, and good luck to you guys to getting this thing resolved. I know it's been a long journey for everybody involved. So Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any? Can I ask a quick question of the board? Does everyone have a copy of the bylaws that are that that you are operating under? Would it, would, it be helpful for us to send out a copy to everyone? Okay, we can blind copy um, um, those out. And I believe that there was an earlier request for what was put up on the screen regarding Mr. Tran's. Permitting history. Permitting history. And we're going to do a print copy of that so that it will go into the record since it was something you reviewed in the progress of the case. And then that will also be something that will be available, you know, as part of the record. Excuse me from the audience. Can you all be respectful? We're still meeting. So that will so also be a part of the record so that um, because we don't want something coming up on a screen that's being considered by you that's not actually recorded somewhere. So we'll also we may need to add that as evidence next time. Just so you know, there'll be a written uh, copy of that. Okay. okay. Thank you all for taking it outside. <laughs> okay, Ms. Christie. I didn't know if there was anything else that we needed to follow up with. We'll go ahead, uh, or Jennifer will make sure that the two items of evidence you received today will also be scanned in and part of the record. I think that covers all the items of evidence that we received today that may not have already been recorded. Thank you. There, there's I, a question. Yeah, I, I get this. this is a question brought up by me and the amount of permits that he still has open. Mr. Tran still has open at this point, some of them dating back to 2019. 
at what point in time do we need to take a look at how many permits are open and why, considering it took three years to build one house and this is not the first case that we're hearing in the last six months with kind of the same flavor that we've got open monies and not finished business and open and here we are with more open permits. So how many more are out there? As far as discussion on that matter, since Mr. Tran's not present, we can't discuss it, but we can, as because that permit list was provided on video, we can print that off and make that available and make it part of the, re the official record. And that would be something for discussion next time. And the board would have authority to dig into that under the current case. Right, the board would need to, would need to direct that, but I would recommend you do that when Mr. Tran gotcha. is present. Okay. Okay. So staff has a question of the board then, <clears throat> because sometimes you ask questions up here and we're, we work to get you the answers during, during these hearings. Is that some, is that information that you would like provided on the front end when these hearings come up, you want to know how many permits they have, have they ever had previous complaint, like not previous complaints, but previous hearings, would you like that provided? when these hearings think come up. And is know. that okay to provide, um, Christy? That information is something that can be provided to the board. I would recommend that you, that you ask for that after a finding of probable cause and maybe, and make the record that you're not using it in consideration to determine Influence. whether or not the particular violations that you're looking at have occurred. You definitely don't wanna make it appear that it's influencing your decision making. You want to, each one should be a case by case. When you get to the sentencing part, that's um, the, the determination what the fine is going to be or if it's going to be referred over, that's very important information for you because that affects your decision making on what the fine should be and whether or not it's something where harsher um, information, harsher penalties should be, should be enforced. As far as looking at the permits, that's something also you can consider when you're making the determination uh, of sent of penalties because it could influence other projects that are going. So it would be something you may want to consider at that time. So it's some, certainly something we can make that, the, that they can make available, but you need to parse it out as to when you're going to consider it and make the record that it, whether or not it's being considered and at what point. And that would be a disciplinary hearing and not probable cause. That would be my recommendation is when you go to the point of determining what the fine or the uh, penalty should be is that you request that information. We can have printed copy. We can also have it available. And then we can go back and add it into the record as we're doing with what you've already reviewed. Since it was asked for and it was shown during this meeting, then you can go, we can go back and add it into the record for this meeting. But going forward, I would recommend it be available in paper copy or to go on the screen. Uh, at the sentencing or the penalty phase. Disciplinary. Mr. Oglesby, you have a question? Yeah, as a matter of board business, um, and Mr. tauber has been here a long time too, he may want to elaborate since he's in the audience. You know, until, this is just a, an observation and a question. Until we experienced uh, several cases of, you know, wrongdoing from the couple of different contractors, I don't recall prior to that us requiring a restitution amount. There was a recommendation occasionally for restitution, but those numbers weren't established by this board unless anybody feel free to correct me, but I'm pretty sure we, we enforced the penalties that are in our guides and they take those penalties and they settle this restitution in, in, in a different uh, venue. Uh, but I, I'm, and, and they all elaborate as needed. I, I, you've been on the board a long time too, and I would love to hear anybody's opinion. And I, I, I know you have too, Mike. Yeah, I, I would. I'd like a little bit of clarification. The you, you know, smaller amounts here and there for recommendation. But when you get into some dollars that we're we're looking at on some of the cases, um, I, I'm, I'm, I would just like more clarification because uh, I don't know, it just concerned me as well. So your question is not whether or not you have the power to do it, it's whether or not you've done it in the past? It's not the question. I know we didn't do it in the past. It started 
being more acceptable during the other two contractors severe cases where people were uh, impacted real and, and it became more of a policy at that time but I'm not sure it's part of our if it's in our guide or if we have the uh, authority to do that or is it just a recommendation that this board's making so what Jennifer is bringing up on the board um, on the screen she's trying to pull up the county code on this So we're trying to pull up the hearings. So on your screen, you see that this is disciplinary hearing procedure. These are all the items that you can find a contractor in discipline of. Um, and as you can see, in E1, the board may order the contractor to make restitution in the amount of financial loss suffered by the consumer. So by Clint County Ordinance, the Contractor Competency Board can order restitution. Um, I wasn't here when banks and the cost started up, but as I recall, I remember that being something that was handled by my predecessor that, that it was available. I remember a discussion with him, however briefly, that that was something that was available, and I think that's probably their um, behavior is probably what triggered the finding of restitution. It has been ordered in the past prior to those cases. We have dealt with restitution in the past. Have we dealt with restitution in this magnitude? No, but it has always been on the complainant and respondent to provide supporting documentation to support their claim um, and that is you know where we get into hearings that last months and months and months because you're continually asking for support of their claim for restitution i think that's why this board kind of did it sporadically in the past because it may not have been clear um, and, and maybe, like Christy said, the result of those cases increased the magnitude of these uh, hearings. Um, but it, it has been done. I would agree with Mr. Bell. Um, and in reference back to Mr. Overby, when we had cases where it was pretty cut and dry, somebody you know, took $100,000, $200,000 and nothing was done, that's pretty easy to say restitution. When you get a situation like we have today, and I, Mr. Bachelor Roofer, and it, you know, there's. You know, I, I feel like we're kind of setting ourselves up. I mean, the case today, especially. Yes. It's Let me too, recommend that you don't discuss the case today, but if you want to talk about large amounts, then yeah. or, or amounts, that's one of those. If you want to talk, well, a, have a generic discussion, but don't, let's not discuss anything where the, the complainant so cases is where not present. We come up with a situation that's not as cut and dry or okay. as well I know we really have very sporadic I've been on the board 30 years now right and, and I'm just telling you recently since the bad cases it seemed like every case is and I think we need to be real careful on putting I, dollars I, on something that we don't exactly know I feel like they need to go to court civil decide and you know we can go by that and that's kind of how we used to do is they went to court then we agreed on whatever you know what I mean because we're not a court so and yeah. and Mr. Bachelor you're correct a lot of times those cases had a judgment from a civil case as backup documentation sure if you have um, a complainant that's coming to you and asking you for restitution and that's within your powers and they don't necessarily go to they don't always have the option of hiring an attorney and going to a civil case. So that's within your powers to do. Um, if, if you choose or you don't think you have enough information as far as restitution, then that's also something to have during your discussions about whether or not there's going to be restitution in any particular case and at what level. And to have the complainant, and well, both parties, to provide the evidence you need 
prior to making that decision because your decision is going to have to be made on the evidence in front of you. And if they don't supply that sufficiently for you, you can certainly refuse or considerably uh, lessen what that restitution would be. And I've seen those discussions with this board that you just didn't have the information you needed. I've, I've also seen in the past where when it's being litigated that we have deferred on that to let the litigation play out. If I'm correct, that's just, I'm not, I'm not sure the technicalities of how that occurred, but I know we've had pushed back because I, I agree with some of the board members here that if someone's battling in court, the same thing that they're coming to us to adjudicate, for lack of a better term. So even if you were to order restitution and then there'd be a court settlement at the same time, they can't collect twice? Mm -hmm. So they're only going to be able to collect on one or the other? The court settlements are going to be the most powerful ones because, as you said, you're not a court. Um, while you have some powers, the court has more powers and go back, can go back and enforce those orders better. And that may be something you want to discuss with people when they come for the restitution. You may want to tell them, or I'll be happy to tell them, you can't collect twice, so they can order it here, um, but you're going to have to select which one gets paid. And they may, if they have a court go case going, their attorneys are going to be present. Very few people um, go to court without having an attorney. So their attorneys may want to be present to discuss that with this board. For instance, the idea that there's a settlement in the works, that would save you a lot of time if they would agree to let the settlement work through. And if the settlement doesn't work through, then to come back and you'll handle the restitution issue. But our only, our only recourse should the restitution not be made would be to their licensing. The permitting privileges. It, well, it depends on if they are a locally licensed contractor or a state certified contractor. Um, you cannot order restitution to a state certified contractor, so that takes them completely out of play. Uh, this board does have the ability to discipline the license should they not comply with their final order, and their final order does include if restitution is ordered. So you have the ability to bring that contractor back before this board and discipline them for failure to comply with their final order. But most of the disciplinary action or things that can be brought against the person who's ordered to pay restitution would be in the court system versus our horsepower just to the licensing. The if enforcement of paying correct. The money. So the, the actions you could take are in regard, regard to their licensing only. Correct. Yeah. Okay. That helps. We can't enforce them to pay the money. That's not in our reach. But keep in mind, their licensing is their livelihood. That's true. So that's that, that's some, some weight that you have as a board. Uh, you can you have the ability to take away somebody's livelihood. Mm -hmm. um, and if that settlement, um, if you accept that settlement for the restitution, you can you can still affect the licensing. If if there's a settlement and they violate that settlement. The courts certainly have judgment at their, at their fingertips, but if you've ordered restitution in com in, uh, and the compliance with the settlement and they fail to comply with the settlement and if you accepted that settlement order as your restitution, then you certainly are back to where you can actually look at the licensing. But we can't place judgment or levies against people's properties and stuff like that, so that's right. what the court can do. So I'm, I'm just we, saying that you can yeah, still take licensing action because yeah. that's, a, that's a collateral matter. Correct. Good discussion. Thank you. Motion to dismiss. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Uh, second? Second. All in favor say aye. Let's go. Bye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just when you.